The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It feels like life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. My life. Oh, it's better, it's better with you. This is true. Oh, it's better, it's better with two. My life. Oh, it's better with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to my brother, my brother, and me. And what a I swing. Just, Justin, no, wow, I'm sorry. Wow, that was intense. That was a wild shift in energy from the beginning to that, end. That was my, like, the 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 ball is going, going. It might be. Oh, no, drop the outfield. Yeah, <laughs> right sure. Oh. Another running, and then the guy f- was going to pick it up. <laughs> his pants ripped. And then. And everyone saw uh, his butt and his ball. And his, <laughs> the like, energy just dropped. Yeah. Did I say I'm Justin? Yeah, you well, uh, we yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm I'm Travis, I guess. Wow. Wow, I'm Griffin. This is some of our best work yet, guys. Um, and that is what we're here to celebrate. A life in podcasting. <laughs> oh <laughs> that, <laughs> that the bill has come due. The piper has begun to play his little tune, his jaunty tune that lures your wallet out of its protective case uh attached to your chain. Yes. And uh starts to sneak those five dollar bills out once a month. It's the Max Fun Drive, everybody. Welcome. To this very special episode, we should say uh, it is time to pay the piper. As Justin said, the piper, he's got bills to pay, guys. Like people never talk about this, but like yeah. the piper, and it, it's it's all reasonable stuff. You know, it's not like he doesn't have wild expenses or anything. But like piping's a job. Guys. It's a job, and you have to pay him, or else. You, uh, and we don't talk about this a lot when we talk about the pipe piper. We talk about his great getting rid of rats, or in this case, as Justin has put it. Wallets, bills. Yeah. your money, five dollar bills. Yes, but, but if if that doesn't happen, if he does, if he is not fairly compensated for that, then he takes the kids. Right, he takes all the kids in town. He plays yes. this wonderful flute and makes all the children leave. And then the people in town are like, "Are you fucking kidding me, Pied Piper? That is such an unnecessary escalation." So we're not saying if you don't like support the Max Fund Drive and support our shows, then we'll play a magic flute that makes the kids leave. Yeah, but. But no, it's but, not off the uh, table. But here's like, the thing: at the end of the day, they hired him to do a job, get the rats out of town. Yeah, and he yeah. did it. Yeah, and they're like, "Oh, cool, the rats are gone." Well, we're not paying you now. The rats are already gone, which is pretty messed up. Pretty now messed taking up. the kids. You're right. Huge escalation. escalation. Huge. Of, huge. Huge. A lot of people make the, like get. A lot of people forget that the Pied Piper will play his beautiful music for free for anybody to listen and enjoy. And a lot of people will listen to his great music while they're washing dishes. You know, they'll open a window or they're like doing laundry and they sometimes take it for granted that, you know, he's always going to be there and right. that, that, you know, then they're, and they forget that it's, you know, that he <laughs> relies on them. Yeah. Just because it's free to listen, he relies on their generosity. Maximum fun drive. <laughs> Or <laughs> it's so good com. that we said that four Maximum, minutes in. <laughs> MaximumFun.org. No, it's not Maximum Fun Drive. Don't listen to me. It's MaximumFun.org forward slash join. That's the URL. Go there right now because it is on. The Max Fun Drive, the one time a year where we come to you and say, hey, these shows, they're artist owned. They're audience supported. That's you. Yeah. That's you. That's the only reason our shows exist is because of your generosity. And we need you now. If you've never gotten on board, then you need to to head on over to MaximumFun.org for his last join for just five bucks a month. If you can put five bucks a month, you are going to be unlocking an absolute treasure trove, literal hundreds of hours 
of bonus content. And there is a what truly wild assortment, maybe the most unhinged D and D campaign that has ever existed, as designed by my daughter Charlie. Yep. There is a uh, pranky doodle dandy. What about this oh, year, Justin? So what about good. this year? This year we <laughs> this one's still evolving, folks. This one is exciting. <laughs> We did a special episode record, uh, brainstorming a new um, transmedia property that we can sort of lean into that pays residuals in the way that podcasting does not. And then we pitched it to our agent, Joel, and um, it's still an evolving story, the details of which we hope to reveal to you yes. at some point in the near future. I'll just put it uh, this way. We thought it was so wildly unhinged that it would be, we'd call Joel and Joel would be like, um, you guys are fired even though I'm your agent. And yeah. instead, Joel was like, okay, I'll talk to people. So you can hear all of that uh, and more and all the other, there's more levels. If you're already a supporter, uh, maybe it's time to to up that their support. Check that out, MaximumFun.org slash join. Because here's now, the other thing about the Pied Piper, is you think Pied Piper, he's been out there tooting his horn and flute and stuff for, for 12 years. He's probably like doing doing the, like the best he's ever done. But then you got to remember that the Pied Piper for the last couple of years hasn't been able to toot his flute out in public um, because of the bubonic plague or what have you. Yeah. And so, and so maybe... The Pipe Piper could use some ex- some extra support th- That's now true. more than ever. Um, and also, just one more thing: if you do become a supporter, make sure uh, you talk about it on social media. We're always so grateful for that. And keep an eye on the MBMBAM slash uh, Macroy family account because we're going to be announcing some uh, special weird goals like we've done in the past. But that's not what I want to talk about right now, guys. It's okay, been uh, a little over one two- week since you looked at me. Thanks, there it is. Thank you. Uh, it's been a solid 24 hours. We've all been living with the announcement of Man vs. B now. And yes. I just, yeah. we don't have any new information. Uh, we're recording we haven't a- even released the episode. No, it's talking. not out yet. But <laughs> yeah. I just want to know, how's your heart? How's your walk going, guys? Yeah, what this is the the intro that you want to do to this episode is just redoing the one we did last this time. This isn't is an intro which we recorded. This, this, which we recorded for the audience's clarification yesterday. Yesterday, yes, exactly. I just want to know if you've marinated in it. How you're feeling? I share. I did share with my wife. Yeah. I shared the image. She's like, "We're absolutely watching that." And uh-huh. I said, "I'll burn in hell first. <laughs> but then I said, "Of course we'll watch it because we're going to be live streaming every second of yeah. it. Screen caps, gifs, the when, whole thing." When I told my wife, she said, "Um." Oh yeah, he's got a baby now. He needs that money, um, which was an excellent point, I think, on Teresa's part. Yeah, well, he yeah, wants yeah. to make something that baby can enjoy because babies hate bees. Yeah, <laughs> babies can't do <laughs> anything about bees. I love you guys. I can't just do this. Again. I really don't want to talk about me versus bee anymore. Yeah, me versus bee again. Because I have That's a sneaking fair. suspicion we're going to get a lot of feedback that we went a little hard on man versus bee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, let's instead, just uh-huh. as a, a, a thought experiment, okay. <laughs> read a listener's question and then tr- attempt to answer it. Oh, oh, weird. Okay. Okay. I mean, just like, I don't know. It's just a thought. Something yeah, new. let's do it. Recently, I started a new job where one of the perks is that we have a cabinet full of office supplies that are free for us to take, <gasps> such oh. as- <gasps> Sorry, can- just the, the idea of a office of that has cabinet with office supplies in it being- a perk of the job sent yep. a chill up my spine. You have the essential tools you need to do your work. There are pens, there are notepads, and ju- yes, and, Jimmy cl- and Jimmy clips. Yeah, no, yeah, to put on your penis. Yeah, you no, put wait, on your penis. On. It keeps you from what's, finishing. What's a what's a Jimmy clip? Huh? Well, you know how sometimes you finish too fast. Yeah, yeah, never. <laughs> If anything, okay, Justin's but, wrong, okay, too slow. Justin, you understand the concept, though, that one could finish too fast. A Jimmy clip just kind of prevents that by sort of closing everything up down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does it get in the way? Oh, absolutely, it does. Is it okay. wildly painful? Oh, yeah, wildly for painful? everyone yeah. involved. Effective? I mean, yeah, in a sort of brute force way. J- d- uh, beloved listener, a Jimmy clip is... Uh, something that you it is a, a piece of guitar paraphernalia um, that tightens your tone by when well, you put it up near the, the head of, of your guitar and it tightens your tone. I think it maybe makes palm muting easier. I don't know what you think a Jimmy clip is. is this is now the question. 
The rest, I, yeah, the, 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 there the is no question. The rest of the question anymore. raised. Yeah. This is not what a Jimmy clip is. What's a Jimmy clip? Okay, a, what could it be? Could be a, a binder clip. clip? One of those that's like, you know, you squeeze the two sides and it opens up, let's think of it, a mouth. That's what yeah. I always think of it as. Yeah, and that is that. what I and that is what you would apply to the gen, to, to genitals. To the uh, genitals. G- is it possible that this listener maybe refli- re- refers to paper as Jimmy just in general? Oh. Like hand me that news, hand me that news, Jimmy. I want to read the good news today. Is this a Xerox slash copier kind of situation where we've been calling paper clips paper clips the whole time, but that's the like brand name and Jimmy Clip is just the actual name, like hook and loop instead of Velcro? Is that what we're dealing with? I can't fathom. I've Googled it in every way I could think of. Yeah. The best I the best I've come up with so far is Jimmy Fallon, a clip of Jimmy Fallon performing with Migos using office supplies. That's all I can get. I can't get, I can't get anything else. Now, is it possible that they work in an office based around ice cream and Jimmy's, uh, a.k.a. Sprinkles, this is a clip to hold the Jimmy's together? It's possible. Could be, but who... But I think it should be legal to call Sprinkles Jimmy's. Oh, uh, yeah. that's an excellent point. Their name is James. Thank you. Now, I have found a single <sighs> track on Tidal... Uh, where an artist guest performed on uh, a, a, a rap track called Plan B, and it guest stars a person named Jimmy Paperclips. Huh? Which okay. is... Maybe that's a reference to him being in there. To one-time rapper Jimmy Paperclips. Ooh, I accidentally clicked it, and now I'm listening to it. Hey, this is good. <laughs> this is good stuff, Jimmy. All right. This is good. Okay. Should we... Should we do the rest of the question, or I guess I just that's the yeah, first piece of advice is to, to don't call them that. No. They're not that. They're, They're not, not that, that. Whatever it is. And this is and and my friend, as far as the internet knows, this is not a regional thing. I think it's a youth I thing. I think it's a youth thing. However, there is a sign on the cabinet that discourages any hoarding of the office supplies. God. I do understand they don't want us to clean out the cabinet, but my desk is nowhere near the cabinet, so I want to mm-hmm. go ahead and take what I know I will use and not have to come back to the cabinet too frequently. My question is, how much can I take before it's considered hoarding, or how do I get all the supplies I need to my desk without raising suspicions? That's from Admin Anxiety in Atlanta. I do want to I do want to put in a pitch right here that sitting is killing us. And oh, maybe it's not the worst thing to have a little built-in like stroll, yeah, just to get the circulation, just to steady yourself. Yeah, I'll say that sitting has been great for me. My whole okay. life, me and yeah. sitting are very well acquainted, and I am still such a huge. I can't get enough of this stuff. I would actually go one step further and say that maybe Justin, the problem is sitting isn't reclined enough, and we should recline. We need more chaise lounges. Oh, that's good. Yeah, is that sitting is the problem, Justin. But you know what? So is standing. Yeah. What about lying down desks? Huh? Yes. That Go could, the yeah. opposite uh, way. Yes. This uh, is what I'm saying. Zero G desks. Yeah. Let, you know those things where it's just like, not only is it a VR helmet, like I also walk on the little slippery disc. And so it's like I'm walking in there. A desk like that, but I'm laying down. But and I can down. maybe do a 360 spin in there. That a gyroscope. Cool. Just a sort of sensory deprivation work station. Yes, please. Also, is it so bad to have an excuse to get up from your desk and not work for the time it takes to walk over there and back? And then if your boss is like, hey, you didn't get anything done today. You're like, I mm. just kept running out of Jimmy clips, my dude. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I keep getting more Jimmy's. You got me all worried. You. you got me all anxious with this note about not hoarding the supplies, so I only do take one Jimmy clip at a time. And yeah. then I have to come back. And that's my whole day. It's like 60 to 70 trips to the cabinet just to get 60 to 70 Jimmy clips. <sighs> this sucks. <sighs> This sucks that this is a thing that you have to, that any human being has to think about to the point of being even a little bit stressed is how many work supplies is too many work supplies to take to my desk. What do they think you're going to do with them? Do they think that you're going to build some sort of mobile out of Jimmy clips? Griffin, hold on. Hey, time out, Griffin. You've never worked an office job? Yes. I take it from me, a person who has... The idea of like, well, it's 10 a.m. and I'm done with my work. I could go ask what else they need me to work on. Or I could make a decorative picture out of different colored, uh, you know, post-it notes arranged in a way that it looks like Mario's face. I oh, think I know cool. what I'll be doing today. Yeah. And do you work at Nintendo at this? At Not this at that match? point. 
But okay. then what's that? Oh, I made this collage out of mm. post-it notes walking by while it's Mario himself. And he sees that and he's like, it's a me. And I'm like, it's a you. It is a and then he hires me. And what's that? Now I'm his bag man, uh, which I Sorry, think what? I'm his, his valet. Bag man. You know? His valet. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. And his body what, man. Yeah. And then pretty soon, look at me. I'm running the whole show. So uh, maybe it's not so bad. Everybody try that out. Yeah. That's the one way to get hired by Nintendo. Yep. Just, or also you could himself. push you could push Reggie Fisame out of the way of a, a speeding bus. And Those he doesn't the work two. there anymore. But no, he but is he needs you. He is very big and fun to think about. <laughs> <laughs> he does have a certain Herman Munster as quality he's about a, him. We're not gonna drag him, he's just fun to think he's about. Fun to that, think that's not about. mean. Herman Munster's a beefcake. Yeah, like I, Jerry O'Connell. Yeah. yeah. Jerry O'Connell seems fun. He does, doesn't he? Doesn't he seem like he'd be fun and approachable? Tw- I tweeted at him about my secret identity, and he was like, you're the second person who's asking me about that today. And I was like, do you want to be my, my best friend, or what's up? And nothing, no, nothing, nothing so far, happened. but like, I just feel like- He's nervous. He, he doesn't know how to respond. He doesn't want to embarrass himself. That is a treacherous balloon to float in the year of our Lord 2022, I it feel It is like. true, right? This person seems like a good- <laughs> Yeah. Anything? Anybody? Good period. Um, you want another question? I have. <laughs> this is a great, great opening to a question. This I know everything about this person. I think I bet I could guess their social security number best on this first question. I have a fedora. It's actually a trilby, but who cares? Well, I think that's a. I think that's a haiku. I'm that pretty is, sure that's. A haiku. I have a fedora. Uh, it's actually a trilby, but who cares? Oh, we're just we're very close though. Silent. Yeah. It has been with me for twelve years. Even survived being stolen by a hurricane in twenty twelve and washed up in a parking lot. What? It's a. It. It's a, it. Wait. It a homeward bounded. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a survivor from a bygone age. Ain't that the truth? Well, yeah. <laughs> Should I get rid of my hat? <clears throat> I'm moving, so it might be time. Yeah. Here's a photo for the slack. Trilling for Trilby in Los Angeles. I don't know you that well. Oh, really? Because feel... you said earlier you could like give their social security number, Justin. So which well, one is I read, it? I read. You're right, Travis. I I I don't know you for a very long time. There you go. Is that better? Yeah. yeah. Um, grammatically, I've, no, but conceptually, yes. I feel like from what I can read in this question, I feel like. You and the hat have become inseparable at this point. Oh, yeah. I feel like the hat wrote the question. I mean, really, I mean, at this point, literally, the hat was taken from you by an act of God and made its way back to you. Yeah. God tried to take the the hat and and couldn't do it. Who are you to just casually toss it in a dumpster? I will also say this. No matter what the item is, whether it be clothing or decoration, whatever, after 12 years, you then, I don't think you have to justify to anyone why you have it. Because there's someone's like, why do you have that home? Like, I've had it for like a long time. I had it for 12 years, right? Like, that's just like, oh, at this point, it's become part of your, like, yeah. your routine that you've, that hat exists. You've long passed that like awkward liminal space where you've had the hat for like five years. Uh-huh. And so some people associate you with the hat, but not everyone, so you can get rid of it. A 12 year hat. My God! Yeah, the memories, the 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 juices you've imbued in this thing is it, it. You can't. I don't think you can get rid of it. Now, don't get me wrong. Aesthetically, I don't think many people, unless you are Bob Hoskins in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, I don't think you can pull off this particular hat. Yeah. Um, it seems like a very sort of specific steez. Um, that's but, your pull, and not Indiana Jones, huh? Indiana Jones's hat didn't. Ha- it was not quite as decorative as as this. His was okay. very straightforward, more of a wide brim. This is a trilby, not a fedora, after all. Fair. Um, yeah. I. Oof. Do you look good in it? Hmm. Ooh. Huh. That would have been a better image to send, eh? Hey. Now, yeah. I will say this. I'm going to read between the lines. I'm going to infer for a moment here. Uh, I I would pose this as a potential backstories, boys, that they bought this hat. 
And they put it on, they're like, I don't know. And then someone gave them a hard time about it. So they doubled down on the hat and like, no, I love this hat, right? And then Hurricane took it and they're like, oh, I'm free. I'm free from the hat. Well, it came back, shit. The mask. And now, yes, this is a mask situation because moving is not a time where it's just like, I have to get rid of this hat that takes up, let's be honest, not that much space, right? So if they're asking about if they should get rid of it or not, I think they're looking for us to say yes, so you that they're like, I had to get rid of it. I was the moving. The Mac always told me to, yeah. I want to go back to Griffin's question I, and, and say that I really hope this person thinks they look good in the hat. Yeah. Because the idea that you would do sort of like a, a self-shaming, you, you know, self-flagellation, aesthetic flagellation. Yeah. By wearing a hat you think looks bad for 12 years yeah. is actually too sad for me to 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 think on. I, I hope that's not the Unless truth. the problem is you found yourself to be too beautiful sans hat and you got sick of all of the attention. I see. People just flinging themselves at you, offering you modeling deals left and right. And you're like, I got to do something. They got to horns To soften this. There. Yeah, a right. real horns, like a zabrak. That would be a good look, though. Is that, that what you're would saying? Would be good. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess so. People want to fuck Darth Maul every day. People do want to be fucking Darth Maul. I've noticed that. It's. I don't know when this thing started. He's a bad man who did hurt Qui Gon Jinn. Um, I. Well. I sure hope you like this hat because if not, this has been a terrible waste of our time. Like, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That yeah, was yeah, my yeah, next absolutely. thought was that if you're not actually torn up about this, and instead. You came to us with this very specific heat of I'm a hat owner. Man alive, that's gonna really pee me o. <laughs> pee your o right off. Pee your o right off. Right yeah. Now you could uh, find some sort of uh, acrylic box to put it in on a mantle and be like, "That's the hat that that's God couldn't kill." Right? Yeah. Or you could, and then you can like screw in a little plaque on it that says, "This is Bob Hoskins's real ass hat from Who Framed Roger Rabbit." Oh, you know what? We need to start doing. I think that people at home should adopt what they do at like sporting arenas when a player retires. When there's a shirt where you're like, I love this shirt, it doesn't match my style anymore or whatever, we should raise it up into the rafters of your house, right? Oh. It's just like, now it's on the ceiling. Oh, that's good. Ooh, that's really good. Travis, can I hit you with another idea? That is that I leapfrogged off that idea to get sure. to, and I'm really happy about it. Get really into hockey. Huh. And then wait for a player on the team that you like to score three goals in a single game. And okay. then, goodbye, Fedora. That, that one's going right out to celebrate the hat trick. And then they fly that fedora up into the rafters of the hockey arena. No, you throw that fedora out. And I think some teams, they like put all the hats in a bucket. And then as you walk out of the venue, you can maybe try and grab your hat back. But I know what's going to grab this busted ass. <laughs> that can't be. <laughs> You're going to have to voluntarily leave it behind. Is that my trilby? No, someone else must have thrown that trilby. I don't know. Oh, no, man. I saw you throw it. I no, saw man. you throw it. No, I wasn't. Mine, that wasn't mine, mine. My trilby definitely looked way cooler than this trilby. Have you seen Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Mine looked like that. Looked exactly. It actually was that one. I stole it from the studio lot. I had it in an acrylic box for a while, but then I threw it. I mean, fuck. I no, I didn't throw it. I mine's still at home in the box. Leave me alone. I'm going to Arby's. Um. Hey, listen. Speaking of going to Arby's, it would be great if you could support us in the Max Fun Tribe so Thank that you. we can go get more Arby's. Yeah. Your your Max Fun membership pays to support the shows that you like on the network. This I feel like this past year we have uh we have upped our, our game pretty dramatically. We started doing Adventure Zone weekly again, yeah. which has been uh a fucking lot of work. Uh but we have enjoyed making the show but uh, we've it's had not to really hire. It's just an hour. Yeah, eight. Justin it's and not, I are coasting. Yeah, I'm, yeah, it's not. Yeah, really too yeah, bad. you guys are right. Uh, we've we've hired some more people to help. We've hired a full time editor for the first time. Uh, yeah. in in the history of our shows, we talk about how the, the the donations are essential to make the shows happen. Like we have missed a lot fewer episodes. Yeah. of show since we have people who are helping us to make sure that they get. Since we hired bosses, yeah, <laughs> like I would just uh, we hire bosses to tell us to do podcasts, even if we don't want to, or if our feet hurt and we're sad. <laughs> and I mean, not just that, you know, we uh, wait, our feet hurt. It steps out a big rock. 
outside yeah. in the parking lot of the I store. I can't record. My feet hurt. Tell me we have not canceled episodes for, for less. <laughs> for yeah, that's a good related. point. For less than that. That's true. Sometimes it's like, I don't know, I meant to eat a sandwich and I ate half a sandwich and yeah. I just can't do it today, boys. And I mean, there's also the very kind of bigger side of it of like, this is our jobs. I mean, the stuff that we make, we make this a priority. It's important for us to do this and uh, we know how much it means to people and this is the time of year where it we're- It means everything. It means well, everything. I'm not gonna- It means everything. I don't wanna say that, but yeah. Our lives are nothing without- Well, <laughs> okay, wow. Once again, a rapid energy Can shift from talk- Justin. <laughs> What are the gifts? Like, what do you get? Like, I don't want to do this for free. Besides, like, feeling good and, like... Yeah, that's stupid. Like, I don't care. Okay, Okay. so for $5 a month, you will get immediate access. I did that. Huh? Uh, Huge access. Huge access to over 350 hours of bonus content. Hello, I'm huge access. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Why did that get me so good? I don't know, but it's got, there's so much good stuff. We've been doing this for, this is our 11th Max Fun Drive, I want to say. The amount of content just from us, from our mini shows is like outrageous at this point. I cannot remember it all. Uh, But it's, there's some really good shit in there. Uh, For $10 a month, you'll become a friend of the family. Uh, We have 35 embroidered patches for you to choose from for all of the different shows. You get the bonus content too. You get uh, a Letterpress Max Fun membership card. Uh, But we teamed up with Max Fun fan uh, Merit Bondaru from Frog and Toad Press, who designed a bunch of very, very cool patches that you can put on any kind of surface that you want that, I mean, will work on patches. You can't put it on like steel. I bet. I mean, uh, it, it gl- there's glue. They're beautiful two-inch round patches with very, very uh, cute designs for all the shows, and you're going to look cool and get lots of cool comments for your great patch. Uh, and then at 20 bucks a month, you get the Diamond Friendship Circle. It's got the patches and the membership card and the bonus content, and then you can choose your $20 uh, a month gift uh, between the Max Fun Creativity Pack or the Rocket Hat. The creativity pack uh, is uh, was designed by artist and Max Funster Ellen Vandermeide, uh, and it's a deck of 54 cards in an inspiration deck, and each one has an activity Ooh. suggestion from your favorite hosts. Uh, it's got a set of uh, some postcards. It's got some non-hardening colorful modeling clay. It's got a custom black wing pencil, uh, and all of that can just help you make cool stuff. And if you don't want that, you can just opt for the uh, Max Fun Drive Rocket logo hat instead. It's embroidered, it's eco friendly, it's adjustable, and it's going to keep you cool and shaded while you listen to podcasts out in nature. There's other rewards too. We'll talk about those more later. But I also would encourage you if you're already a, a Max Fun member and you have been for a while, maybe this is the time to consider upgrading your membership to a higher support level. Maybe you've been listening to more Max Fun shows. Uh, maybe let's say your favorite actual play podcast started doing every week instead of just once a week, and you're like, "Hey, that's why." Well, maybe even your second or third. Yeah, favorite maybe actual play maybe podcast. an actual play podcast that you have heard of started right. doing um, every week instead of just once. A week or once every, every two week weeks. instead of once. Okay, uh, you stick with me. You know what I mean. This is a great time. You can upgrade that to maximumfun.org slash join. Um, and I want to say one more thing because I think it's always important to mention. We know that not everybody is able to do a monthly support level, and we totally get that. You know, we're we're asking you to consider it if you can. Uh, but there's other ways you can help. You can help share the link, uh, maximumfun.org slash join. You could talk about uh, why. Uh, Max Fun means a lot to you. Make sure everyone knows the Max Fun Drive is going on. All of that stuff is great. And if you're already a supporter, you could talk about how great it is, all of the um, the bonus content, uh, how how it feels to support the art and artists you love, all of that stuff. Helping get the word out uh, means a lot to us as well. Just go to MaximumFun.org forward slash join and just do the right thing. We have a goal this year of two new and upgrading members. And so we're really hoping you can have us, 50% of that could be you. So just yeah, think about it that way. It. We're going to rocket past that goal within the first week. You I mean, listen, yeah, oh, that's guys, what you, you said, a, but what? You missed a zero, it's 20. 20. No, 20. wait, I'm sorry, God. you missed, and then there were three more zeros after that that you did. Oh, I don't, much, I don't okay, count zeros, they're not real. You know what I mean? Real yeah. Numbers, yeah. No. It's just a demarcation between positive and negative values, yeah, so it's not actually worth talking about. Maximumfund.org slash join. 
I just uh, yeah, but it. I wanted it to be I wanted it to be the last thing that we said in this break, so now I have to no. say it again. Maximumfun.org slash join. Hit it. You want get there. Yeah. Do you want to <laughs> hey, should we say hi to the wizard and just approach them quietly? Yeah. Don't scare them. Don't like jump out Come and to see the wizard. Thank you. The wonderful Scarier. wizard. Scarier. This uh yes, yes, wizard. Oh, Ooh, I got ASMR. ASMR. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, gross. It's not gross. It's beautiful. You calmed me down. You relaxed me. It's gross to give your brother ASMR. That's the reason I said Take it. it from me, okay. Justin McElroy. I said ASMR. I wouldn't say that you gave me tingles. No. Because that no! Worked, that's worse. No, okay, listen, so, I got tingy wingies, but it's fine. <laughs> I got tingy wingies deep down. I want um, and of course, they podcast. originated from my nipples, as all ASMR as tingles they do. do. <laughs> that's the that's what Travis calls the epicenter. Yeah, and it goes d- then down under the armpit, swirls around in there for a while, then up the skull, down into the nostril, out of the mouth, and down to the taint. Comes close to the taint, but then it swerves back Stops. the last second. Stops. I don't want to talk about that anymore. Oh, yeah, what's wrong? Either. Lots right. of people sent this one in. Thank you. I just you. wish we were more comfortable talking about our bodies with each other. Mm. I'm, feel, I'm actually comfortable with the amount of comfort that we have about that particular <laughs> subject. Uh, this is how to be okay at your first detention. I love that. Uh, I wish I would love an article that was just how to be okay in general. Yeah, um, just, yeah. I think we could all use that wiki how article. You never I will say there's it. also lots of first things that I've done in my life that I wish I could go back and be okay at the first time. Yeah. I don't need to name them, but you could probably fill in a lot of the blanks. Uh, you've never gotten a detention before, right? But today you just happen to lie about getting an A on an assignment that you never did and your teacher finds out. Oops, that's terrible, but today it won't be. Wait, what? What? What kind of lie is that? Also, you why would your about- teacher care? Yeah, enough to give you detention. I got an A on the math test. You were absent during the math test. You have detention now. That's not really a punishable thing. Yeah. Have you all ever had detention? Did you all ever get detention? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Uh, I got... Did I have detention? Yeah, one time. I got it one uh, time, Me too. and Eric Stokes were cutting up in the library. Uh, oh, cutting gosh. up books? Damn, you must have been cutting up real hard. Yeah, it was pretty intense cutting out. I can't what remember you... what I did, but I did. Uh, Justin, do you remember the guy? I think it was at our middle school, Griffin, too, uh, who on in Spirit Week always wore the Star Trek uniform. Yes. Holy shit. Yes. Yeah. How is your memory that good, Trav? Well, I don't remember his name, Griffin, but I remember the guy yeah. who wore the Star Trek uniform at least once oh, a year. Oh, man. He is cordially invited to our podcast whenever yeah, he whenever you want to into man. the zoom call i was in uh his room for detention once it was like an all-day thing which was also weird and i just remember i'd finished my work like two hours in and i had some comic books in my backpack because i was a real cool dude and i was like i finished my work can i just sit here and read comic books and he was like yeah and it was not that bad all things considered everybody uh detention kind of ruled um, I'm I'm really glad to hear that. Mine was uneventful. It was in the art room, and I got it because I accidentally knocked a table over, and it hit Ashley Fillinger in the leg. Oh, and I got oh, they man. did not like that. Her mom was a teacher, and so I feel like there was like a little bit a little of bit of like if, if I don't get she didn't get hurt or anything, and it was an accident. And then she wrote on the pink slip uh, in an attempt to try and be cute. Griffin flipped a table over to is that fair? Girl. Were you? And I was like, that is that fair? fair? Like, give me the detention, but you don't have to. No, fuck I'm asking you now. Is that were you trying to be cute when you? Know or were I mean, you I just? Was go- cute? I was I was goofing, but I wasn't like this will be cute. I'll hurt this girl's leg. Yeah, <laughs> like that's not my sort of vibe. Anyway, do you have anything you want to say, Ashley? I'm really sorry, Ashley. Or? Like I I you. It it didn't even hit you that hard <laughs> and it uh and it was an accident and you did forgive me right away and you actually felt bad that i got detention which was yeah that very should chill. very that chill. should that should matter that should count for something it does matter should, it does that, there should be she wasn't person she wasn't pressing charges. that should it be matter, there should I be got. an option for that right Ugh. I remember once my friend Hunter went to sit down in a chair and because of ADHD and impulse control, I pulled the chair and moved it and he fell on his butt and he looked at me and said, why did you do that? And I said, Hunter, I have no idea. I'm so sorry. So and sorry. the teacher was like, what happened over there? And Hunter was like, no, then don't worry about it. And it was fine. So solid, Hunter. It was That's a so solid cool. move, Hunter. Um, okay, so step one, get the detention. Your teachers just talk to you and you are crying. This is bad. Whoa. <laughs> This is bad, especially if, is bad. if it is at the beginning of the day, because then you'll just have the worst day ever. You need to take a breath and dry your eyes. This time is about you. 
Ask if you may go to the restroom if you need a few minutes to yourself. That's it's so just... strong. If you have a full fucking breakdown and you're like, may I be excused to collect my thoughts for this heinous punishment that you have laid at my feet? Now, I could, I could make the argument that it would be way worse to get it right at the end of the day when you think, like, oh, only five minutes left, and then I get to go home and play all the Banjo-Kazooie I want. And then the teacher's like, you have to stay an extra, like, hour and a half or whatever. And you're like, what? To have the right... If you have all day to get used to the idea and cancel your plans mentally, I don't right. think that's as bad. Banjo and Kazooie are waiting for me. Yeah. I have made commitments that I intend to keep, teacher. You don't understand. They o- I, they only get to live while I play the game. <laughs> uh, if a friend or acquaintance, even an enemy, asks what is wrong, do not tell them. The what? whole world does not need to know what just happened. That is your information for you to know and for them not to find out. Powerful. Hey, I heard you flipped a table over on Ashley Fillinger. I don't know anything about that, actually. That does not sound like anything I would do, does it? You a must powerful be response? Oh, is that what's going around? Oh, Interesting. I never thought that you would be one to fall prey to rumors and scuttlebutt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you Fleetwood Mac? Because you're making a lot of rumors. Try to talk to the teacher. Don't make excuses and don't try saying you didn't do it because they might think you are lying. Just explain what happened and tell them that you're sorry. Let them know, even if you don't truly, that you understand why you were in trouble. Tell them and be true to your word that you will not let it happen again. I mean, you, I've never known a teacher that's like, okay, undetention. No detention. I mean, if you sold it hard enough. But also, I like how WikiHow just slipped in there in the middle, even if you feel nothing inside. Apologize anyway. Even, even if you don't understand why you got, I, I won't do it again, or I will do it again. Which one is it? Is it, I'll do it the I, same amount. Where are I we just at? Re- I just remembered that I, and this is not a particularly fun memory, but I got detention on the last day of high school I attended. Uh, because they had started to crack down like really, really, really hard on being late for first period because apparently it was just like an epidemic. So they had like a zero tolerance policy that they started doing this this one day and on the mom last was the day ho- of school. Mom was no, 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 no. My last day of I didn't attend the last like month of my senior year of high school. Uh, cause mom was in the hospital and I had stayed overnight. And so a- the Alex, the, my friend who picked me up from school or picked me up and drove me to school, uh, we were like coming in late and somebody was like, Hey, I'm sorry, you got detention now. And I looked at them with this look of like, Oh, bo- oh man, you're going to feel, I'm about you're going to gonna feel on pretty here. bad about this later. I didn't say anything. And the detention was, I had to like clean up, uh, the lunch tables and like wipe them up. And so, like, I I dutifully attended my uh my my table wiping at lunchtime, and then the like vice principal of the school like came up and was like, "Oh, you don't you you can stop. You don't you have to do that." Some, wait, and then I and then I called you, Justin, and you came to pick me up, and I never went back to school again. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's working for the weekend. <laughs> Uh, uh, when you get home, especially if your teacher's contacted your parent, they might be ticked off to say the least. Start, start, and this seems like bad advice, by asking them how many detentions them and their spouse have ever gotten. Both Whoa, power that, move. Oh, that's so good. Yeah, I flipped a table over on Ashley Fillinger. What about, what about you, father? And, and yeah. what about you, mother? Tell or me. father's spouse? Tell me, mother and or father's spouse. <laughs> Let them know Einstein even got in trouble every every nice. now and then. He That's probably a flipped the one. table over on lots of other innocent students. On Ashley Fillinger Sr. <laughs> <laughs> right, senior, senior, senior. <laughs> If they won't quit interrupting you, tell them respectfully, please let me explain. I understand I made please. a mistake. Would you please let me explain what happened, Dad? Step three. Hear me out. Step three. Keep your grades up. What step? Oh, yes. <laughs> Codex five A. Do remember to keep your grades up. Keep your grades up. Uh, step six. When explaining, don't cry. Talk in your big boy slash girl voice, or they will think you aren't ready to explain. Hey. Tell the full story, even the mistakes. Dad, dad, spouse. It's your mom. Just say, hey, mom. Dad, dad, spouse. I want you to know. I do want to say, where the fuck do you two get off? Because how many two, I'm tables sure. did you flip? I'm a big boy. <laughs> I'm a big boy, and I'm going to explain it to you. But first, tell me of your sins. Um. <laughs> yeah, you have to ask your parents to speak on their sins when you're not in trouble. Yeah, 
That's so essential. Get them yeah. to admit to stuff that you can then store away and use as ammunition later. I hope my kids try to drop that on me so I can inform them that the whole point is to try to make humans that don't fuck up as much as you Yeah, right. That's humanity. It's just like incrementally fucking up less. The, the, uh, the problem for, I would say, all of us is that our children have, I would say, hundreds of hours of examples of us fucking up very publicly. Yeah, right. right. They're going to be like, let me go to YouTube. Give me one second. I will find audio evidence of you doing this exact thing. Yeah. Oh, what's that? Words. You're mad at me for flipping a table onto Ashley Fittinger the third. One moment. <laughs> one moment. Uh... Be respectful while you're in detention. If you're not, that's a good way to get another detention and get grounded. Because it takes two to get grounded. It takes it takes two detentions to get grounded in pretty much sure. any household. I think we can all agree with that. That's standard. Anything else is a violation of the Geneva Convention. Absolutely. Um, that's it. That's it. I think that's a good thing on how to. You don't want to break down in, at your first detention. Because it's a sign of weakness. And then they'll just yeah. want to keep giving you detention because they get off on whatever small amount of power that they can hold over, over you, you developing people. You know? What if you, th- what would you guys think about if they were like, you have detention and you were like, oh, awesome. Thank you. Not sincere, not in a sarcastic way. Sincerely, like, oh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. And That's they're like, cool. what? like, I love it. I love That's it. That's oh. so badass. And then you, they'll be like, keep it up, and you'll get more detention. You'll be like, I love it. I Thank want more so detention. Oh, detention. Like, you have a month of detention. You're like, make it a year. <laughs> Please. I love I, all well, I love stuff. structure. I just love, I'm into it. Yeah. Thank you. I have a new segment. What? Wow. That I want to try just for the Max Fun Drive. Okay, cool. It's sort of a spinoff. Okay. Is that all right? I want Is it. Is this a good time to do yeah, it? Yeah, I need it. Bustin' makes me buy stuff. <laughs> this is Bustin' makes me buy stuff, and it's a, a segment that is not unlike Haunted Doll Watch, except it is the tools that you need to detect yes. and and capture haunted dolls of your own. And bust. To, and bust. Um, that's and feel one. good. Aura glasses are the subject of today's uh, segment. Sorry, one more time. Aura glasses. Aura. A U R A. Aura glasses. Ghost hunt. And this is the list. The title of the listing is Aura glasses. Ghost hunting paranormal equipment. I R E M F U V torch detector rim pod. Okay. Gotta hit that SEO. You gotta get it. Yeah, I would say that get it. just on like on paper, Aura glasses does sound like a sponsor we would use. Right. And we would save okay. you like 15% off. Your aura glasses. Did you know aura glasses are made out of recycled ghost shoes and ghost meat? <laughs> For every pair of aura glasses that you buy, <laughs> we someone in need <laughs> will also be able to see ghosts. Um, here's the quotes from the front of the box. Um, uh, aura glasses. See auras instantly. And the quotes are not sourced to anybody, but they are in quotation marks. Fast delivery, awesome product, and they work. Huh. Amazing Those- glasses. My Reiki students love them. Hmm, okay. Helpful seller. Saw my aura instantly in mirror. Thank you. And lastly, works as described. I can even see ghosts with them. Well, now. That's what an escalation that is. Wow. Untethered auras. That's great. Or aura glasses and aura goggles, if you want to get up. Do you want glasses or aura goggles? (laughs) Do you want want aura glasses or do you want to get a nuclear wedgie? The last (laughs) one. Oh, these goggles? You can even see pool ghosts. These are their original and official copyright protected and trademark brands established in 2004. So important. The synthetic photothermal dye mm-hmm. used for highlighting auras, which is inspired by dicyanin dye, is exclusive only to aura glasses and aura goggles. Everyone is able to see auras naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We know yeah. this. But it can take a long time and effort to be able to do that. The aura glasses enable anyone to see auras instantly. Okay. As well as looking at the human aura, people use them for ghost hunting, uh-huh. Reiki scanning, sure. seeing auras in the environment, yeah. such as animals and trees. So important. That'd be this would be it might be great for hunting. <laughs> That's my own editorialization, but it would be yeah, so sure. nice to see a deer like, I see you, fucko. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. The predator can see auras, right? That's Predator yeah. sees predator auras. Predator sees the Think auras. About it. At a certain point, come- if I'm seeing the auras of everything, though, that might be, is there a way to, like, filter to if I just want to see a squirrel aura or a bird aura? Or am I just seeing all auras all the time? 
they come with a neat official protective pouch. Cool. This was this is, now I, I I hear you guys got a lot of questions. Do you see the individual colors in auras through the aura glasses? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. Oh. <laughs> These glasses are designed to highlight the basic, and this is in all caps, shape okay. of the aura. Uh, okay. Surrounding the edge of the physical body up to a few inches and present it as an electric blue color through the lenses. Okay. I see. Okay, so you can't tell how angry or horny or tired they right. are. No, only through usual means. Right. I, Ask, I asking. Am, <laughs> the, the aura glasses, and you always see this on every product, but so you can tell that it's really um, uh, effective here. The aura glasses are an honest product, okay. and they are not a scam. Cool. <laughs> That's important to know. <laughs> or anything malicious. And I personally am a spiritual person who does this for the passion and enthusiasm. So you can find a step-by-step user guide. Uh, and then they have, I mean, uh, I will, I'm going to slack you guys the picture of the, just so you can see the neat protective pouch that is really pretty neat. Um, let me just slack you a picture of the neat protective pouch. Oh, there's the, that's all the okay. art, but you can see all the, you can. Hey, why there. in that first top part, does it look like someone's wearing a giant pair of glasses on their dick? Uh, I don't know, Trev, but we don't, we, I do want to, I have even better news. Um, if you guys will just uh, be quiet for a minute and 20 oh, seconds. Yeah. This is just a special Max Fun Drive bonus. Here we go. Aura glasses. See auras instantly. If you want to see auras instantly, even without any prior spiritual development, you can do so with AuraView's Aura Glasses. I've been a paranormal investigator for over 10 years, and I'm part of a ghost hunting group. We visit <laughs> lots of places and use all sorts of equipment, and the Aura Glasses are by far our favorite. As well as seeing spirit activity with the Aura glasses, they can be hooked up to other gear, such as we recently mounted one onto our thermal camera during a visit to an old mansion in England. And the guys were literally left open-mouthed from what this thing captured. Absolutely incredible, and for what they do, they are not at all expensive. Now, okay, let's pause Mm. here for a moment. Um, There's a lot... This guy is a, a, a member of a ghost hunting group. Yep. And and oh, where did we use them? Oh yeah, I remember. It was um an old mansion. <laughs> just that. It was no. It wasn't just that. No, it was in England. <laughs> um, <laughs> where ghosts come from? And I like how he used the terminology. You can hook them up. Which uh, these are a pair of glasses, and you put them on a camera. You like taped. <laughs> you like taped the glasses over the lens? Is that just held them up? Yeah, Very that's basic. Scientific. You can, co- yeah, you can connect them. Okay, let's let's move on. The aura glasses work by the use of a groundbreaking synthetic photothermal chemical compound. This unique compound is what helps to instantly highlight subtle energy fields, which otherwise are invisible to the naked eye. I do Reiki treatments, and the aura glasses are my main tool for diagnosis and healing. Couldn't do it without them. Honestly, when you look through them, it opens up a whole new world. They're a quick way to sing auras without the need for years of self-development. Now, I would like to know with this Reiki practitioner here, before you had the aura mm-hmm. glasses, yeah. what exactly were you up to? I was guessing. Just, I was just guessing before they... Going just, by what, smell. I would wave a hand and be like, Anything? Was that? Was that? Um, hey, Justin, wait, can I just... Wait, wait, wait. 12 more oh. seconds. They're amazing. Completely blew my mind away. The Aura Glasses are available to buy from officialauraglasses.com and online marketplaces. Okay. Okay. Huh. Uh, can I just say that I do not like that they invoked uh, seeing like a whole new world or whatever it is, because then it reminds me too much of that episode of Are You Afraid of the Dark, where yes. they got some glasses from Sardo's, and then they could see yes. Zardo then- accent on the dough. No, Mister accent on the dough. Accent on the dough. And then they could see what looked. <laughs> what is wrong? With I just your watched this fucking episode. No, because I just watched it a week oh, ago. Okay. Because Cooper's like obsessed. Oh, I I just have anyway. that in my head all the Sardo. time. Sardo. Um, and then uh, you he you could see them, and it was like a whole universe coming through to ours. I don't want that power. That was, I think that was the curse of the secret, the tale of the secret spats. I believe that's true. Yes, yes, yes. Um, that one had a horrifying ending, oh, by the way. Go back to Paramount Plus and go watch that bad boy. Yeah, that one oh, fucked me up really, good. That one it's and the real, the, real unnerving. The pinball one. There's some of those that are like. 
they'll leave some leave some some fear inside of you. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Oh home. no, that one fucked yeah, me up forever. That's brutal. It's brutal. So those are the or glasses. Now, 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 Ooh. now, now. What would you pay? What would you pay? Nineteen ninety nine. Now, what would you? You're gonna see fucking. It's gonna ghosts. show you ghosts, dude. I'm gonna say. But only when I have them on, I need prescription glasses. Unless these or glasses come in prescription. I, I know you don't. You wouldn't. You would pay twenty dollars because to you they're just sunglasses, or perhaps in this case, fun glasses. You don't think anything is really gonna happen with them. Yeah. I'm asking Griffin. Yeah. That this seller, by the way, ninety nine percent positive feedback, twelve hundred. What transactions gonna, so these things work 100 no percent. no i'm way. not well, saying this for the i'm not saying this for the joke i genuinely think that they cost 69 dollars and 99 cents okay wow a huge range here uh no you are going to pay uh uh 39.99 pounds which is about 52 bucks and 17 cents so huh a that's steal what from Griffin's point of view, a ripoff from Travis's. Isn't that interesting? Huh. Well, beauty is in the eye of the beholder or something. If I could just, I don't want to move on without uh, mentioning that there is 100% a, if if these images, if this this glasses, that that price is a little uh, much for you to, uh, to swing, there is uh, good news on the horizon. Okay, I'm sending now. Hmm. Oh! <laughs> now get out, you buried the lead, Justin. <laughs> Juice, now this is one I could totally go for. Hell yeah! <laughs> We're looking at the Aura Glasses Sior Instantly Economy model. Yeah, what do we see here, Trev? Uh, you know, the X-ray specs, uh, not the classy plastic ones that you might get at Muppets 3D at Disney World, but rather uh, like the paper ones that you might have gotten in the 90s to watch like an episode of Simpsons in 3D. Yeah. These were delivered yeah. in a TV guide. Exactly. Yes. That's what we're looking yes. at here. And the great thing is with these card bake uh, these card aura glasses these are only thirty dollars oh. so yeah it's like a huge <laughs> and um without any context whatsoever they're at the bottom of the picture five stars there's just a picture of five just stars five stars on uh, no idea what that's from or out of or referencing but hey five stars yeah and what's the price on these yeah. does it say these are thirty bucks. I did. I did just mention. I think that I paid ago. the twenty oh. extra dollars for for the classier model. Yeah. Well, yeah. They're not I mean, gonna wear gonna out. Like, I would never wear you these. Wear out these of the house. You wear these. You're gonna look like a fucking gem. Yeah. You know, like whoa. <sighs> okay, just real quick. I do have to send them because I did just send you the economy model, and I don't want you to miss out. It's not. It's not fair to you guys. Whoa. <laughs> Fuck, the aura now, goggles look so good. That's a look, dude. That's what I gotta get. I gotta get the aura goggles, right? Yeah. Like, absolutely. Can you have overnight yeah, them? So we can wear them on tour. Do they have overnight think, delivery? Maybe for, maybe for June, I can I yeah. can get them here in time. Sorry, again, five they're stars. Coming over from, they're coming over from British, so they would take a while uh, to get across yeah. the ocean. Oh. It's good, too, because that also works for, uh, what, 13th Doctor cosplay, uh, which is nice. Yeah. You can use, oh, this is good because you can use the aura goggles for 13. You use the aura glasses economy model for 10. You use the aura glasses for 12. Baby, you're covered in uh, three out of the, what, five modern day doctors. Yeah. It's nice. And, and you see nice. ghosts, five stars. <laughs> five stars, see ghosts. <laughs> Uh, this is, uh, of course, you know us. We are we have proven in the last thirty seconds that we make great use of our money. Uh, we are responsible people to give your money to because yeah. we're not going to buy goggles. It, you know, we're not going to buy fake ghost hunting goggles. And you can trust us; we're trustworthy. Well. And we deserve it. I'll just say, we deserve $5 a month. Okay. Should, if that comes from you or somebody else, I don't care. But I do need my $5 a month. And I'm sitting here in my studio with my hand literally extended. In front of Money, me, please. With fingers open. Money, please. Um, That's not yeah. part of the Max Fun Drive ad, by the way. That's just Justin That's and just the way he from the heart. It does say to speak from the heart. And so I feel like that is what Justin has just done. 
Uh, no, I mean, it, it mean, it means the world. We've been able to do this for most of our adult lives now at this point. And that is, uh, a, not like in, in like th- most of the rest of our adult lives. You know what I mean? Like I fully plan on kicking it at least 12 more years. Can I, sp- can um, I yeah. speak from the heart for a moment? Yeah, sure. Cause me and Justin are doing a real dog shit job of it. Uh, one of the yep. things I've missed most over the last two years is going to live shows and going to conventions. Uh, because sometimes when we are doing these shows, it's easy to sit at our computers. We record in three different places even and feel very disconnected from the people that mm. we are making these shows for. And doing the live shows and having the people there in the audience and sharing that moment. Uh, or doing like conventions where we get to do like meet and greets and stuff is a moment where we get to feel you know, connected to the people we're making the show for. And uh, we haven't been able to do that, but we have still done the Max Fun Drives, and it's always such a, a great reminder once a year that we're not just, like, putting these things out into the void um, and that, you know, we we get to make these for people who appreciate them and that we get to kind of share that connection with people. And so I always get really excited around the Max Fun Drive time because it's very energizing for us and it's it's just always nice uh, to be reminded that the things we make matter to people and I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Listen, five bucks a month, you get all the bonus content. You know about that. 10 bucks a month, you get the bonus content, you get the membership card, you get a cool patch. All our patches look really great. $20 a month, you can pick the creativity kit, you can pick the hat, you get all the other stuff. It's it's uh it's a sweet, I would say, set of stuff they've got planned for the uh for the Max Fun Drive gifts this year. And we have a bunch of other sweet stuff planned too. Uh a, a, a lot of stretch goal content that we have either created or are about to create. And one of them is actually so rotten that I don't want it to happen. So, like, if we don't hit the goal, there will be a part of me that's like, whew, thank goodness for that. Uh, I'm also, I'd just say, I'm especially excited. There's uh, a $35 level, too, with a messenger bag. But there's a $100 a month level that gets you HQ access, uh, which includes everything else mentioned before, and uh, quarterly virtual hang time uh, with MaxFun hosts and staff. And actually, tonight, as we're recording this, Teresa and I are doing one where Teresa will be uh, showing people different napkin folding techniques. Um, oh my gosh, that's it's, amazing. And I've seen her do them. They're all really cool while I like uh, am going to be moderating with questions and stuff. And I'm really excited about it. It sounds super fun and we're excited to show people that stuff and like talk with people. It's really uh, a great idea. Uh, MaximumFun.org slash join is the link to go to. Please, uh, yep. please, please think about joining and helping us out. Maybe you've been listening to our shows for you know since their inception, but you've always thought, ah, somebody else will, somebody else will support them. Be the chain. They be won't the, be the be the support for us. <laughs> please, thank you. Maximumfund.org forward slash I just join. Said it. Yeah, but I wanted to end yeah, sure. and like do it, it while people are thinking about it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Maximumfund.org forward slash join. I've been learning to drive for the past year, making slow but steady progress. Something I found I've been doing is watching how people drive when I'm walking along a road, looking at how they handle roundabouts, awkward junctions, etc. However, a couple of times, I've been caught staring at these cars as if I'm glaring at the drivers. Brothers, how do I communicate I'm just watching and learning, not trying to give them a death glare? That's from Slow But Sure in Southampton. I mean, this is easy. Double thumbs up. Oh, yeah, that is good. Great work out there. Dumb thumbs up, you're driving, yeah. This is like we need a great job horn, but for pedestrians. Who I are actually telling would, cars how good they're doing at driving. If I were the driver, I would rather see that from someone on the sidewalk than someone like in another car next to me. Because that's the thing. I also do this as a driver, where sometimes uh you I, you know, get hyper focused or zone out or something and I'm looking at someone. And then I forget like that I'm not just looking into a void or a television and that's another human being. And then they turn and look at me and we make eye contact for a minute. And if they like parked and opened their door and said, why are you looking at me? I would have no answer to that. And so I'd rather look over to the side of the road and just see someone give me a big thumbs up. And that would probably make my day. If a pedestrian tells you you're doing a great job Mm -hmm. driving, that's got to be one of the greatest compliments you can receive. Because when you're in mm -hmm. another car... And you see someone in a car and you're like, doing a good job driving. It's like, well, yeah, 
because if I make an accident and smash into you, the airbags and everything like will will be all right. But a pedestrian is like, my life is in your hands right now. Mm, because true. the opposite is definitely true. There's a lady yes. in my neighborhood uh, who I often pass, and the look that she gives me is the most withered. And at first, I thought it was just me, but my friends who have like come, uh, uh, people I've talked to are like, "Oh yeah, that woman hates people in cars." Is the yeah. only thing we can determine. And so I have drastically. Oh, when I see her, I become the most textbook, like one mile under the speed limit. Uh, like driver, I can possibly be, and yet still that with it. And it's not just her permanent face; her face changes when she sees me in the car, so, and I don't know what I can do. So you're saying that when she is not present in oh, your yeah. residential neighborhood, you absolutely rip shit down the lane. <laughs> I'm just saying, twenty twenty miles an hour. That's nothing. Is a, jo- is a joke. It feels like a fucking joke when I do that. Like. Anyone behind me is like, he's not really doing 20. I mean, like, I know hey, I know what the sign says, but he's not doing 20, right? We can do 25, and it's fine. Right. Like, what's in, the fucking difference? In a school zone, I get it, because their young brains aren't developed enough to know, like, I should not step in front of the big the big steel beast. Right. That is, that is car. And I um, watch for children. If I see that ball roll in the middle of the street, I stop. Forget about I it. I get it. Forget I know it. what I that swer- means. If I see a ball roll into the street two blocks away, I swerve into a tree. Absolutely. I say, not, not even gonna fuck around with yeah, it. Yeah, no way. I see a pinwheel, like, catching the breeze. And bl- uh, no, I, I will I'm, get out and punch my own car in the front like the Hulk to save that kid. You know I what see I mean? one of those signs that said, that's like, slow, there's children here. I will turn around and yeah. I will drive in the other direction. I'll sell my car just so that there's no risk. If I know there's kids not in vehicles. Yeah. Within an eyesight of me, I will stop the car, park it, get out, and walk the rest of the way. Sometimes I'll just 10, 20 miles without a car just in case, because I heard a child's laughter once in that city. You yeah. know what I mean? Just to be safe. To. But in a residential few, area, the, fucking, fucking gun tear it. that shit up, dog. Yeah, dude. The best is if you can get that swirl of leaves or a big splash of puddle, and it's just like, <sighs> I'm doing it. This is a car commercial now, baby. Yeah. Oh, that feels great. good. Oh, Maybe the puddle splashes good. up on a kid carrying a big tuba in a carrying oh, it's funny. case. funny. <laughs> but then you also feel bad because it's like, oh shit, was that a kid? Was that and a kid? I thought, and shit, I thought it was just a sentient tuba case. It was a scarecrow with a tuba and they got you. They got you. That's how they get you to slow down. Justin, do you want to say anything about car safety around children? It's huge important. Okay. Huge important, I agree. Huge, <laughs> huge Jackman. <laughs> Now, now, kids, make sure you pay attention to this video. It's made by Huntington legend Justin McElroy. You got to know the rules of the road if you want to take one of these beautiful steel beasts out there. <laughs> Hi, I'm Justin McElroy from Podcasts. You may remember me from Podcasts. Huge important you slow drive around, kids. Thanks. <laughs> What's that? You? <laughs> they told me this video had to be 15 minutes, so now I'm going to show you uh, how to dug yeah, you. So I'm gonna, <laughs> like I this. got a bunch of nectarines here. I'm going to squish them, and you imagine that's your head in a fucking car, you dipshit. But I am going to eat one of these because I did skip breakfast on my way here. <laughs> now this video is going to start with a 10-minute me unwrapping and eating a nectarine, but you imagine that's a, like head blood from a car accident. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be a brick wall. Oh, this nectarine is you. My hand is the car, I guess, in this scenario. I'm, I'm joined by professional Footballer Willie Refrigerator Perry, mm-hmm. he's gonna run into me at 35 miles an hour to show you <laughs> something about cars and impact and whatever. So well. I'm okay. you and the Ned Greens if you were eating a smaller person at the time of the impact. Okay, here so we go. I'm gonna make Fridge Perry step on one of these nectarines. You imagine that's your head because you were trying to dug you while driving. Okay, here we go. Wait, where are you going? Fridge. I remember one of those videos where they were like, um, it, wrecks are so like forceful and terrible that danger lurks all around. They said, I once came upon a scene where a box of Kleenex in a head-on collision had rocketed up from where they were being laid on the back Mm -hmm. seat in the window, had rocketed forward and like killed somebody. And it's like, what do you want me to do with this? (laughs) I mean, step one, don't put your Kleenex back there. So I can't, okay, like I took the Kleenex down, but like, are you really trying to like send me into a spiral of like, I don't, nobody fucking knows, man. Yeah. Box of Kleenex. That's how you could go out. That's Who like knows? watching a Final Destination movie and be like, don't smoke 
uh, in your car near a sewer pipe on the opposite end of a field where somebody is grilling some chicken or else it'll explode <laughs> and the fence will go through you and cut you into a bunch of pieces. It's like we've all we've been there. We've all been there. Do you guys ever think about Final Destination and wonder no. if it okay? Wonder if it was just a PSA on behalf of truck drivers who have logs on the back of their truck, and it's just like the whole movie was paid for by those drivers to keep people from tailgating them. Yeah, that was, I, I think, the biggest result of that movie. Yeah, I mean, I was already pretty scared of a truck carrying a bunch of logs on a place that logs aren't supposed to be. Like yeah. we destroyed the logs so we could put down a road there, right? And Correct. I don't like that the logs are kind of coming back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that I mean, it was an effective sort of marketing tool for the anti-log sort of lobby. Thank you so much for listening. I hope that you just one last request. If you haven't done it already, we really rely on this. There's a lot of people that help make this show possible, by the way, not just us who rely on your generosity to to keep the show coming. Maximumfund.org forward slash join. Please take a minute and join and uh, shows your support because we 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 need it very much and the show doesn't happen without you. And that can sound very big uh, and sort of general, but like I'm talking directly to you. Yeah, you. Who's listening to this now. Yes, you. Kenneth. We need you, Kenneth. <laughs> and if you just heard your name, Kenneth, well, you now you got to do it. Also, Julie. Ezekiel. And Ezekiel and Stephen. Jedediah. Um, Abraham. So thank you. If you've Stephen. done it before- if, if you can upgrade, Moibra. that's huge. Rebeppa. Come on. <laughs> Maximumfund.org forward slash joy. Step gift Hannah. too, but really, the gift is us. We are the gift. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, we have a bunch of shit we usually plug, but do, I, I, do we really need to do that? No, we're not going to do that. So. We're just going to tell you, like, come on. Please. Uh, Please. I'm going to say thanks to Montaigne for the use of our theme song. Yes. My life is better with you. You know how we paid Montaigne? For these for the money. money with money, your donations made it possible for Montaigne. Uh, all right, to get okay. money, that, please come. Okay, yeah, yeah. they yeah, get they it. Get it. Maximumfund.org slash join. When you're hearing this, we just got back from a tour that I'm sure it was a, a success that set the Midwest uh, ablaze. That doesn't sound good. Wouldn't it be better if it was ruinous and we really need them now more oh, than ever? Oh, that's a fair point. I mean, as long as we're pro- prognostic. Yeah, we are going to be touring again in, in June and July. We're going to be in Boston and Mashantucket and Salt Lake City and Portland and San Diego. Uh, and then we're also going to be hitting up uh, D.C. and Cincinnati and Detroit later in the year. You can find all that stuff at Um And uh, I think that's it, yeah. Uh, Griffin, could you, and this is a very specific request here, but I'd, I'd love, love, love to hear your Bill Murray specifically from Ghostbusters 2. Um, I can give you an Osmosis Jones. That's the best I can do. Uh, okay, we'll take it. Okay. I don't want to do Bill Murray. <sighs> oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know that I... I didn't know you had the right. Yeah, I don't want to do, do that because I don't okay, think Justin, I can do a good turn. job. Yeah, Justin, you do Bill Murray. Oh no, no, no! This isn't my. No, best. no, Justin's Absolutely gonna not. give you a suggestion. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Bill Murray and Ghostbusters. I got the ghosts. Someone hand me that dirty egg. <laughs> <laughs> what? The Osmosis Jones starts with him eating a dirty egg, and that's how Thrax. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this establishes the connection between Ghostbusters and Osmosis Jones. <laughs> I'm, I'm Travis Agri. Agri. I'm Griffin. He does eat a dirty egg in Ghostbusters. This is me, my brother, my brother, me. Kiss your dad, scar the lips. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Audience supported.